Hello there again and thanks for coming back to this course on commodity spread trading. I hope very much that you're enjoying the course so far. In the last episode we began to look at the basics of spread trading, covering off futures, what they are, how to use them and the effective leverage that comes from trading with them. Then we moved on to look at what an actual spread is before exploring the correlation between the various raw materials in respect to spread trading and how to profit from using them. In this, the fourth video of the course, we will continue to look at the basics of spread trading, so we will continue to lay the foundations in respect to this. Remember that when you want to build something solid and durable for your future, it must be built on solid foundations. But don't worry, this isn't going to turn into a course on how to construct a house, but we will possibly refer to some of the raw materials that are used to build them. So back to spreads, after all that's why you're here. In the second video on the basics we will look at the types of spreads that we can trade and the differences between them and then move on to explore the advantages and disadvantages in respect to each of them. Remember a spread is a two-way trade where we buy one side and sell the other and look to profit from the change in the difference between the two prices. Now you may be asking the question how can there be different types of spreads? Well let me explain more. The first type of spread is known as an intra-market spread and these are normally created as calendar spreads. As ever, there are two parts to the spread. You go long in one where you buy a future and short in the other where you sell a future. An intra-market spread, you're trading on futures from the same market but with an expiry in different months. As an example, I buy a wheat future expiring in July and simultaneously sell wheat the same raw material but with the expiry in December. The spread position will run until the expiry of the nearest contract or until I close it, but we'll cover closing deals later on. The next type of spread is an intermarket one. This can be created by buying a contract in a market, so going long, and selling a contract with expiry in the same month, going short of it, but in another market. An example of this is I could buy a future on a beef cattle and sell one on lean hogs, both with the maturity in the same month. Maybe because I think that the first element may increase against the second. I will profit from the spread if the price of the beef cattle increases more than that of the lean hogs. A quick note, the expiry months, as mentioned, always nearly coincide. However, there may be the odd occasion depending on your strategy when they may differ. And we can look at this in more detail later on in the course. The important thing to remember for an intermarket spread is you're trading on two different but related commodities with the same expiry. Finally, the third type of spread that we trade is an inter-exchange spread. This type of spread is less well known and is undertaken when you use a future of similar markets that are traded on different exchanges. There are not that many futures that offer this type of trade, but an example would be trading wheat quoted on the Chicago exchange against red wheat which is traded on the Kansas City exchange. So now you know the three types of spread deal we can enter into. I hope the concept of spread trading is becoming somewhat clearer. As I mentioned, once you begin to start to fully understand the basic theory, things will start to fall into place. But why do we trade them? Let's look at the advantages this unique operation gives us. You may have already figured out some of the great benefits that this technique offers, but let's explore them a little bit more specifically. So the first advantage is simplicity. Spread trading is a technique that allows a relative beginner with perhaps a smaller account balance to trade. Please note, by saying a relative beginner, that is not implying that someone with little or no knowledge of the markets and spread trading in particular can suddenly start trading. As I've already said, learning to trade takes time and preparation. But once you've gained the knowledge and started to put it into practice via some simulated trades, spread trading would provide you with the opportunity to start to put those learnings into practice for real. Not only that, it also requires less time than other types of trading. Why? Well, there's no need to continuously monitor your position. You'll only need to spend around 40 minutes per day to check your position and identify new possible trades. It's a type of trading that fits in with the rest of your everyday life. You can easily fit it around work and family. Evaluating trades in advance makes for low frequency but profitable trading. And we would fully recommend this approach to you as you begin your journey with us, becoming a trader who makes a few trades but ensures that they're the winning ones. Trading spreads, buying one side and selling the other, provides us with a protective shield against market movements. We know that volatility often exists in respect to individual futures prices. However, given that the spread trade is a blanket strategy, 
protecting us from movement of the markets, it results in making the total position less volatile than the movement seen in an individual future, even when prices are affected by news or sudden events. Having that protective shield in place gives us a level of security that's not seen when other financial instruments are used. You could say that a spread trade is disconnected from the performance of the financial markets. News that could cause a price to drop suddenly will impact one side of the spread, however the same movement will mean that we will benefit from the other side of it. In our experience, our positions have not been affected by recent political or economic events such as Brexit or the US election. We haven't seen any impact from them at all. For reasons described previously, we understand that in having a covered position, the risk to our position is lower than if we were just trading on a single future. This in turn results in a reduction in margins charged by brokers. They recognise we have two sides to our trade and therefore our exposure to market movement is reduced and they reflect this in discounts on the margin we need to use. We sometimes see discounts of 80-90% to 90 compared to those required when trading an individual future. Therefore, we need less capital to operate. For example, for a single futures trade, the margin may be about two to three thousand dollars. But when operating with the same raw material futures in spread trading, that margin can come down to around the three to four hundred dollar level. This in turn means that you can open more spread positions with the same capital that is needed to open a single futures position. This is a great advantage for traders with smaller accounts. In addition, thanks to the lower margins, the return on capital tends to be much higher when compared to a single futures trade. Even for well capitalised accounts, we can make more trades and therefore better manage our entire portfolio. I won't expand on this now, we will cover it off in the episode on money management later on in the course. But given the reduction in the amount of margin to be paid, we can say that spread trading is a method that enables the most effective use of working capital on futures. Spread trading, when compared to that of the individual futures, has a reduced risk because it's not affected by the performance of a single investment. Instead, as mentioned previously, two futures contracts are traded at the same time. In addition to reducing the risk, this makes it possible to decrease the misinterpretation that could occur between present and past performance. We also know that raw material prices will change depending on the time of the year and the seasons that they experience. For example, the sowing, growing and harvesting season for crops, or the rise and fall in demand for oil for heating purposes based on the seasonal climatic changes. You can still profit from a spread even when the individual legs move sideways. We regularly see, even when a trend is sideways, that one future of the spread moves faster than the other, so the spread price forms a trend of its own. It has been noted that these trends tend to last longer and be more consistent than the trend of the individual future giving more opportunities to open and close positions based on the movement seen. With spreads, as we've said, we work simultaneously with two contracts. We place our stop orders based on the differential between the two prices and not the individual contract. When we need to close out a deal, we do so by reversing the action on both contracts. We have mentioned the increased interest in this market from institutional traders. By trading spreads, we can partially mitigate potential losses caused by the action of the institutions where they identify and trade on areas where they would expect small traders to place their stop orders, thus mitigating what we refer to as institutional stop hunting. In another video coming up shortly, we'll see how to defend ourselves against the institutions and take advantage of the changes brought about by their market involvement. We've covered off the advantages that spread trading can offer us. However, as with everything in life, there are pluses and minuses, good and bad, so we also need to consider the disadvantages that spread trading presents. Now don't worry, the pros of this kind of trading far outweigh the cons, but we need to know and understand them nevertheless. As explained, in taking a spread position, two simultaneous futures trades are executed. This therefore results in twice the commission costs of a single futures trade, so we have to pay more when trading spreads compared to single futures. Another disadvantage that shows itself is liquidity. Working with spreads often involves using longer dated maturities. This may involve looking for trades where there's lower than normal liquidity in the market. As a result, this can sometimes call for a slight adjustment on prices to allow for the trade to be executed on the chosen commodity. This needs to be factored into your strategy before placing the trade. OK, so we've now come to the end of the second episode on the basics of spread trading. I hope you've got to learn the basic principles of this technique, what the different spread types are and the advantages of using them and what to watch out for when trading. 
Stay with me because in the coming video we will enter more and more into the heart of this unique trading tool. In the next episodes we will discuss more aspects of what it takes to become proficient at trading and in particular the fundamental analysis we advise you to undertake before making any trades as well as looking further at how futures are used and how they behave, covering off two interesting concepts known as contango and backwardation. As ever, I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.